Oh, Malika, here we are with a special, 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 super duper special edition of Chicago Hill. A very special edition. Did, did we say special? <laughs> I don't think we said it enough. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, one of my favorite people. <laughs> Nelson Mandela. Mm-hmm. It's his mm-hmm. birthday today, and, you know, he's not walking among us. But he is truly alive. And we talked about it. It would be his 104th birthday today. He was born on July 18th. What was that? 1918. Woo! So he would be how old? 104 today if he was alive. Wow. Wow. What do you find most fascinating about Mandela? What I find most fascinating about Mandela is the fact that his spirit is so strong to have sat in prison for his beliefs, what he truly believed in his heart and his soul. And it was such a sacrifice. It was such a sacrifice. And I mean, you don't meet too many people like that. That's as golden, absolutely golden. You know, absolutely right. I, you know, there's just so much that um, President Nelson Mandela left us to be better as a society. I mean, Mm -hmm. a great example for one, you know, I mean, a great example. One quote that he had, um, remember that hope is a powerful weapon, even when all else is lost. And, And you have a you have a special one, too, that he. Um, that you enjoy about Mandela? Yeah, the one that's behind you. That's one of my favorite sayings. Do not judge me by my successes. Judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up again. Matter of fact, I sent that to my nephew today. That's fantastic. That's what I'm talking about. When you have someone like Nelson Mandela that actually lived Mm -hmm. and his life continues, When we could give quotes of Nelson Mandela today because he lived, it's not because he died, it's because he lived. Here's another one. He lived. Here is another one that he had um, that he gave us. And this is what we need today in our society more than anything. And we talk about healing, healing. And he said, President Mandela said, forgiveness liberates the soul. It removes fear. That is why it is such a powerful weapon. Forgiveness. 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 Ooh. Forgiveness can be tough sometimes, but see, that speaks more to his spirit, even more so. He forgave the people that jailed him, imprisoned <laughs> him, destroyed <laughs> his family. He, he also said, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. So that's just, (laughs) you know. You you had made, before we started recording, you had made the error and said, you know, when he was the president of the United States, you meant for, for, (laughs) you know, his nation. But. I was thinking, I was like, God, wouldn't it have been great to have Mandela as our president? Oh, you know what? What person, what president in any nation has had a moral impact on the world like him? So, you know, Mandela is Mm. the world's president. Whether we want to believe it or not, he is the conscious of presidents. And mm-hmm. I was so happy and proud to be um, the sponsor and a leader in naming a West Side Street after Nelson Mandela. Awesome. It, it, was, it <laughs> was nine years ago that we dedicated parts of Cicero to Nelson Mandela. So um, that's in the 8th District. I tried to get all of Cicero. That's from the far north to the far south and the people that were in those north side um, communities and in those south side communities, they were not having Nelson Mandela be named 
on their street. And that's the fact. Gee, did they say why? I didn't even <laughs> ask. I just um, <laughs> said, we, we will fight on and one day we will rename all of Cicero Mandela Road. That goes all the way down by Midway Airport and we will do it. I remember that day when we <laughs> named Cicero Mandela. We had a real super um, festive day. Oh, I would have loved to have been there when you named that street to see their faces. Oh, it was <laughs> it was it was super fantastic. We had the governor, we had the speaker of the house, the president of of the um, Senate. Awesome. We had every elected official from the mm -hmm. South Side and the West Side come to celebrate the dedication of Nelson Mandela's um, street naming. Awesome. That was good. Let's go to the clip of um, when Nelson Mandela was released from prison with his wife, Wendy. And the crowd getting excited. There's Mr. Mandela, Mr. Nelson Mandela, a free man taking his first steps into a new South Africa. Mrs. Winnie Mandela next to him, waving to the crowds, hand in hand, they leave the Victor Fister prison. Officials, marshals of the National Reception Committee trying to get the people and a salute from Mr. Nelson Mandela, his wife Winnie, greeting the people outside the fences of the Victor Verstaat prison. That is the man who the world has been waiting to see. People running alongside the car. Pushing, touching the car. That was imagine the feeling of that country. That wasn't a funeral. That was celebrating life. That was so. They couldn't have got him a better car. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was thinking that too, and I said, "Boy, I'm I'm spoiled. I'm an American." <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, you, know, you know, I mean, the struggle continued. Of course, he wasn't president when he was released, but he rose to it. I don't even know if he had air conditioning when he got out of that, um, when he got in that car. But Lord knows that was so beautiful to see him celebrated after spending over 27 years in prison. Yes. So and someone like him wouldn't even care. I wonder, like, what was on his mind? What, what, what was he feeling? What was really on his mind when he got into that car and, and just saw the love? He probably was thinking about Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> probably probably you know, but, but you know let's let's go to his reflection all right i'd like to ask you a personal question suddenly specific incident what was the worst thing that happened to you in prison it is easy to forget the past and i cannot answer your question 
because I frankly do not remember. Were you beaten? Not me personally, but uh, many of my colleagues were beaten. Specific incident, what is the best thing that happened to you when you were in prison? It uh, deepened our convictions. It also gave us the opportunity to think uh, very carefully about the problems and some of the mistakes we've made before. And, uh, but the experience was a very harsh one, and jail is never good, especially when one has a family. And uh, I had a wife uh, to whom I had just been married for three years, and I went to jail, and uh, before I had put her in a, I prepared her for the type of experience uh, which she had to face when I was in jail. Could you name one or two things that you read, perhaps books, that you found the most helpful and were the most important to you? Well, uh, you know, almost every publication is very useful when you're in prison. I read quite a lot of biographies, especially uh, biographies of freedom fighters. Did you see films when you were in prison? Motion yes, pictures? yes we did. When I was, uh, I just come as a young man, I became very fond of uh, actors like uh, Tyron Power, like uh, Donna Mitchell, uh, Cesar Romero, Alice Faye, and uh, Carmen Miranda. Those were my heroes and heroesses. During the worst days you were in prison, did you ever think you'd be here in your garden again? Hope was always there, and this is what saved us. Because we went to prison under the uh, cloud of glory, if I can put it that way. And we felt that uh, we had done the right thing. And that rather uh, gave us a lot of, of power, of strength to face these experiences. You know, what, what was interesting is, is he, he is, do you think he blacked out the horrible things that happened to him in the prison or he just made a conscious decision? I'm not gonna go back there. Um, I'm just looking forward. But he spoke of, uh, others being beaten in prison. So he, it was like he recognized their pain, but he didn't want to acknowledge his own pain. That, that speaks volume. He totally just stepped outside of himself and just thought of others. Well, you're right. He, but you know what he said? He wasn't mentally in jail. Mm. You know, that's amazing. He wasn't mm. mentally incarcerated. There is a clip that we need to go to about why he was incarcerated, what his fight was about. Let's go there. I'm Jim Lindsay, and this is Lessons Learned. Our topic today is prisoner number 46664, better known to the world as Nelson Mandela. He was released from a South African prison after 27 years of confinement on February 11th, 1990. Nelson Mandela was born in Transkei, South Africa. In his 20s, he joined the African National Congress, better known by its initials, the ANC. As a member of the ANC, he worked to end the system of apartheid, or white majority rule, in South Africa. Initially, Mandela was committed to the principle of nonviolent resistance that had been championed by Mahatma Gandhi, who had led the Indian independence from Great Britain. By 1961, however, Mandela had abandoned nonviolent resistance to take the lead of the ANC's armed wing. In a series of uh, sabotage and bombing campaigns against South African military and government uh, facilities, he tried to facilitate the end of apartheid. But his campaign of military resistance didn't last long. In 1962, he was arrested and first tried for sabotage and then for treason. At his trial for treason, Mandela justified his embrace of armed struggle and his abandonment of nonviolent resistance. 
He argued it was justified on the grounds that the increased repression of the white government in Pretoria had made violent resistance the only option. At the conclusion of his trial, he gave a stirring defense of the principles that had guided his struggle. I have cherished the idea of a democratic and free society in which all persons will live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an idea for which I hope to live for and to see realized. But my Lord, if it needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. Despite his impassioned and eloquent defense, Mandela was sentenced to life in prison. He would spend the next quarter of a century behind prison bars. He spent many of those years in South Africa's infamous Robben Island prison, working at hard labor in a lime quarry. He would receive one visitor in one letter every six months. If the South African government thought that imprisoning Mandela would stop his fame, they were wrong. Over the years, his fame grew. He became the symbol of the evils of apartheid. In 1985, the white majority regime in Pretoria offered Mandela the opportunity to go free if he would renounce armed struggle. He refused to. Eventually, the government in Pretoria recognized reality, and in February 1990, Nelson Mandela was released from prison. As he left the prison, he spoke to the people of South Africa. He refused to give up on armed struggle, but nonetheless said he hoped to negotiate a peaceful end to apartheid. Over the next years, Mandela would lead that successful effort to end apartheid and peacefully transition to democratic rule. In 1993, Mandela would be recognized for his successes with the Nobel Peace Prize. And in 1994, Mandela would be elected in South Africa's first free, open, and inclusive elections as president of the country. What is the lesson of Nelson Mandela's experience? At its broadest, it reminds us that people do shape history. People can make a difference. Mandela's courage and commitment brought the evil system of apartheid to an end and changed the face of a nation. We see similar examples of people making a difference today, differences both large and small. It might be Aung San Suu Kyi fighting for a democratic transition in Burma, or a fruit vendor like Mohamed Bouazizi in Tunisia, who sacrificed, sparked a revolution that is sweeping the Arab world. We see it in the tireless efforts of countless people from government, from business, from nonprofit groups working to tackle tough foreign policy problems. Malik, it was all about apartheid. And apartheid is a system of institutionalized racial oppression. I mean, it was clear mm -hmm. that, that it was deliberate oppression, much like slavery that we had in America. And President Nelson Mandela refused to allow for that institutionalized oppression to carry on. So the, um, the system of apartheid simply denied non-white South Africans basic human rights, such as the right to vote. We've seen this in America. Mm -hmm. Basic human rights. And they were the majority. They are the majority, and yet they were ruled by non-Black. And, and um, can you believe that President Nelson Mandela spent over 27 years in prison and came out as, came out and ran for president and won because he didn't have hate in his heart. That's, that's why he was able to deal with it freely. He didn't have hate in his heart and he had belief, he had hope and he truly believes in hope. And clearly hope is a powerful thing because to have gone through what he went through, even prior to the prison time, the whole apartheid, I mean, that just, that whole time period just 
I mean, we have South Africans here in Evanston and, and I hear about, you know, how people lived in their backyards and concrete blocks, you know, um, you hear Trevor Noah talking about, you know, just how horrible and dangerous it was in South Africa. And for him to sacrifice so much and then come out and be president. I mean, if that doesn't give you belief in faith and how God works, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, I don't I know what to say. <laughs> Let, let's, let's look at, I want to see if you could draw some parallels to America and apartheid. Cabrini mm -hmm. Green and housing projects in Chicago dislocated people and placed them in certain communities. It actually, um, Chicago is probably one of the most segregated communities in America. Mm -hmm. So history tells us that apartheid was something that discriminated by racial classification. Between 1960 and 1983, 3.5 million Black Africans were removed from their homes and forced into segregated neighborhoods as a result of apartheid legislation. It was done by public policy. In some of the largest mass evictions in modern history, most of these targeted removals were intended to restrict the Black population to 10 designated tribal homelands. Mm, mm, mm. We see that happening right here in our country. And yet we have the power, we have the constitution, we have the freedoms to fight against it. What will we do? <laughs> if he did, if one man went to jail for over 27 years and said no more, mm, mm. It's, it's a call to action for us. It is a call to action. Nelson Mandela gave us an example of how to affect change, even in the darkest of time. He showed us that it could be done. That it can be done. Hope and faith and action. You know, also, I think he talked about one of the most powerful weapons. You remember that one? Is education. Education. You know, mm -hmm. education. You know, I think our young people that may see this have to recognize if they're ever wanting to get themselves and their families out of poverty, the key is to be educated. Mm -hmm. Education, in the words of President Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. There it is. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Whether that's college, whether that's learning a, a, a trade, or just reading about people like Mandela and, and reading about all the greats in, in history and, you know, how this country was built, what this country was built on, just having that information and that knowledge is powerful and will help you in, in the future, most definitely. You know, I think that there is one more clip that we should actually go to that I would love for us to play and it was the clip that we actually celebrated with um, the day that we passed the um, name Mandela. And we should go to that. That was when I, I was talking to you about how we all came together. Pat Quinn was the governor. And I think that we should at least He's not the governor anymore, but he did support my legislation. And I, I would like to, uh, for us to go to that one. Right, and I think right. it's so important that we understand that democracy bubbles up from the grassroots. We are the people here today. This is our democracy. And when we unveil this road, Mandela Road. All right, all right, all right. All right. Well. Mandela Road, right here on the west side of Chicago, one of my greatest accomplishments, I would say, putting his name 
right on the streets. Never forget. And I'll tell you, Malika, one thing that happens on the West Side, we have Mandela Road and, and Muhammad Ali Road, a name Cicero, parts of Cicero Mandela, and parts of Roosevelt, Muhammad Ali. And so they meet two great men that stood for justice. They meet on the west side of Chicago. That is awesome, Representative Ford. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, any closing remarks, Malika, before we <laughs> play our celebratory um, song by another <laughs> great artist um, in our countries? You know, there's there's some some great leaders of our past. Um, I, I'm a, a huge fan of Mahatma Gandhi, huge fan of Mandela, Dr. King, Malcolm X. I mean, the list goes on. These men show us what belief and hope and strength and that it's okay to be righteous and conscious and do the right thing and to step outside of yourself. All of those men to me that I, I listed, they all stepped outside of themselves for the greater of the people to do what was best for the people. And Mandela, oh my goodness, that man, his words live on. I don't even consider him passed on because his spirit still lives on. And a lot of people still learn and feed from his soul, his yeah. legacy. Absolutely. And, and you know what? We talk a lot about making sure and how do we um, help reform people in prison so that when they return, they're going to return to our communities. And mm -hmm. we should take a lesson from the Mandela Ruse because the UN actually developed some Mandela rules on how you should correct people when they're in prison, how you should protect the dignity and the humanity of people in prison and the guards. So mm. I tell you, uh, we know that people just like, just like Mandela, I don't know how many they are, if any, <laughs> <laughs> but we know people are incarcerated today and they will be returning back to our communities. And we should do everything that we can to make sure that they're healthy uh, physically and mentally in um, their capacity when they return. And so in the name of President Nelson Mandela, we have to make sure that we work with these people that harm people within our society, because if they're going to come home, they have to be reformed. So with that said, I think this will conclude our Nelson Mandela special on Chicago Hill. We'll close with a beautiful rendition of Happy Birthday. Thank you, Mandela. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. That is great. Malika, I think that's fantastic. And you know what? I think that we have to do everything that we can to do a holiday for Mandela. Yes, absolutely. It's a call to action for Mandela's holiday in America. I'll talk to you next time. What you say? I was going to ask, are our kids today being taught Mandela in history class? a good question. I can't speak for all classrooms, but I'm sure they say something. <laughs> they better. Accurate history that you've been pushing. Accurate history. All right. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>